Well, it's happening. We've been talking about it, that, you know, women saying we don't need a man and we shouldn't have men around and blah, 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 and calling masculinity toxic. I have been saying you guys are going to rue the day because you will get rid of all the good men. And then who's going to protect you from the bad men? Welcome to Far From Eden, where, you know, red pill content meets traditionalism, meets conspiracy theories, meets anti-communism. I guess if I had to wrap it up, that's kind of what we do here. Ah, wow. So, I was watching Tim Pool last night, and sure enough, the story comes up about women in New York City are getting clocked in the face. I don't know if I can even say all the words, you know, YouTube gets real weird about certain words and stuff. So they're, they're getting in the face in New York City. And I, I feel, I feel guilty that I don't feel guilty because I had the same reaction that Tim Pool said that he had. And that was, he laughed at first because I, I, I agree, like this is, this is them eating crow. You keep saying you, you don't need men, don't need men, I don't need no man. And some of those same people are the people that wanted to abolish the police. I'm not a giant police fan just because they are the arm of the state. However, I know there are good people that go into that profession still thinking like I'm gonna do, do good, although I think they got rid of a lot of those people you know, with the mandates and what all went on with uh, 2020 and how easily, how easy it was to do the wrong thing and get persecuted for it, for trying to do your job. Anyway, that's a complete diversion from the topic. However, now, what did you expect? That's the train. <laughs> what did we expect? I expected this and I expect it to get way worse before it gets better because they're not gonna admit it. So I printed out a little press release from um, NBC. I also, I read another article, <laughs> funnily enough, the other article that I read about this series of incidents was from Glamour Magazine. I'm like, really? What? Glamour, that's like a Cosmo magazine. I'm like, oh, because it, we need a narrative. So we need to keep framing this exactly the way we, we want to frame it. And, and, and it's not in a way that's gonna make anything better because it's, they're not going, when are they gonna admit? I don't know. So, like I said, this is from NBC News. It was last updated uh, March 28th, 2024. So that was yesterday at 8.07 a.m. It's by Mirna Al-Sharif. Al -Sh I, don't, I don't know. Several women have come forward on social media sharing incidents in which they say they were punched by men while they, while they, while they walking the streets of downtown Manhattan in broad daylight in the last month. And I'm reading that exactly as it's written. Multiple videos, which were uploaded to TikTok, have picked up traction in the last week with women online sharing their safety concerns in comments and reply videos. One woman said she was assaulted walking home from class. Another said she was assaulted on her way to work. A third woman said she was attacked walking her dog. At least two of the women describe suspects with similar characteristics. While well, walking your dog, like, must not have been a real dog, cause like, you know, the, the dog must have been not a real dog cause it didn't stop the person. And can we just stop right here and be like, we went to TikTok to, they just like immediately, we need attention, we're victims. Boy, women are so excited to be victims. For now, they are. New York police said they made an arrest in one of the incidents and are investigating another. 
While police wouldn't confirm that the incidents described in the TikTok videos are those they are investigating. <laughs> yeah, it's totally, totally different punch in the, punch in the face incidents. Okay. They shared that they're looking into cases that are very similar to accounts posted on social media. Officials said it's unclear whether the two incidents they are investigating are connected. <laughs> the videos have circulated amid widespread perception in the U.S. that crime is rising, despite recent FBI data that suggests it decreased last year. Here's a weird, weird thing about crime. If you don't prosecute it, if you don't charge people, prosecute them, what are they counting? So, right, so you might arrest somebody, but if you don't, if the charges don't stick, if the charges get dropped, I guess that's not a crime. You will never convince me and many of you guys that crime is on the way down. That is a lie. That is just, they are lying. We all know it. We all know crime is up. We know here the FBI is saying crime is down. So they're lying. Why would they lie? I don't know how anybody isn't waking up yet. <sighs> because cr crime is up. It's ridiculous. Concerns over public safety, exactly have continued to loom in New York City. A series of recent high-profile crimes in the subway system prompted Kathner, Kathner, I combined Governor and Kathy, Governor Kathy Hochul to send National Guard members to some of the busiest stations. Right, and yes, the National Guard has been deployed in New York State to the subway. And I know a lot of people are like, yay, protection, and I'm like, they're getting us used to the idea of martial law. They're getting us used to, you know, wanting. They want us to want, you know, soldiers around. Like, we're here to help you. But crime is down. Crime is down. That's why we need, that's why we need National Guard in the subway. Really? Who is believing this? The women, the women are believing this. In February, police reported a decrease in shootings, murders, and other crimes. Like grand larceny, as opposed to February of last year. However, there was a 3.6% uptick in felony assault, with 1,968 incidents reported to police last month. Weird. According to crime statistics for this past week, Misdemeanor assault is up 10.3% from this time last year, and it has gone up 15.7% in the past two years. And I know that a lot of y'all's blood pressure is rising because you're thinking about mass immigration. Exactly. And who voted that in? Who are the ones that say, oh, those poor people, they're only looking for a better life. Who are the ones that believe that garbage? A police spokesperson declined to answer any additional questions about the recent assault incidents, including whether they represent an uptick in violent crime against women in the city or whether the police department is taking any additional measures to ensure their safety. In other news, as I was researching this topic, I happened to notice in a whole other article, but it's related, that the EU is reducing rape as a crime. I think they have a lot more of it going on in European countries that are experiencing a lot of changes in their demographics, people coming from other cultures that don't look at the relations between men and women in the civilized way that we do. So, it's, it's coming. This is all coming. Unless something stops it. All right, let's get some of these, some of these stories. <laughs> ah. 
So remember, let's just remember, they say they're punched in the face, right, by a man. Sarah Harvard, 30, was among the women who shared her experience online after she saw other women post videos. Hive. She saw somebody else do it, so she's going to do it. We are so impressionable, I swear. Harvard, who posted Tuesday on X, said she was walking to her, to her comedy gig on the Lower East Side when she was punched in the back of the head near the Delancey Street and Essex Street station the evening of March 19th. Quote, I was not on my phone. I was walking somewhere and I got attacked from behind, she told NBC News. So it's really violating that I didn't see it coming and there was nothing I could have done to prevent it from happening. <laughs> she, des she described experiencing a spiky pain, throbbing feeling in her head as she was walking home after the incident. The rest of the night she said she had nausea, headaches, dizziness, and blurry vision. That's not cool. It's not okay to be to be assaulted. It's never okay for someone to violate your your person. However, these women do not actually understand if a man attacks you from behind and hits you in the back of the head, you're getting knocked out. So I'm not saying that like, just to minimize this as a crime. However, these women still don't know. They still are in denial of how, how bad it can really be. Like, they really have no idea. She thinks that if it came, if he came from the front, she could do something about it. I was thinking about this, because I know television affected all of us, and I was thinking about that show Alias. Do you remember that? With Jennifer Garner? And she was just like, I never watched the show, but I remember the commercials. I remember it being really pushed on me. I think I was around 30. And I remember thinking, this little tiny woman is like going and kicking the butts of these dudes. Like, what? How silly, this teeny tiny little, you know, perky little Jennifer Garner. I, I really think women think that they can do that. I think they think that they can take on a dude. I really think they do. And I know they have no idea what actually being punched in the face feels like. Remember Amber Heard? Remember her talking about like Johnny hitter and all this stuff I'm like lady if there's one thing we know about you it's that you have no idea what it would really be like to have a black eye to have a busted lip which she claimed all the things that she had when in reality she was making a you know bruise out of makeup on her face but the fact that she thought she could fake it like that and think that we all would believe that <laughs> lady you we we women we have no idea what it's like to actually like be in a physical fight like that most of us because we don't deal with that that's why we get so violent so easily because we're never thinking it's coming back on us because it doesn't but it is about to now and it this is just the beginning and I hate to be so black pilled about this but there's part of me that's like can we can we at least say it and warn some people get out of the cities for one thing you know I can't separate, you know, the red pill content from what's going on in society, from being traditional. Like it's all, it's all one. I, I don't know how people just see it so compartmentalized and don't see the rest of it. I, and this is how we get to here because people aren't putting two and two together. I was on the way to my comedy show when I got attacked. I got attacked on the sidewalk in front of the Dwayne Reed on Delancey Street, on Delancey between Ludlow Street and Essex Street. I was walking and out of nowhere, bam, I almost fell over. I guess we're talking about her again. The back of my skull throbbing in pain, brain feels rattled. And like I said, I don't want anybody to get attacked. That's terrible. But also, do you have any idea? Like, these women should be way more alarmed. And these women should be able to understand the difference between good men, which is the majority of men, and bad, violent people. And understand that you need the one to stave off the other. Because the other 
the bad guys do not rise up and start acting out like this when they think the good guys are gonna do something about it. It's just how it is. On Tuesday, March 19th at around 8 p.m., I was walking alone. Is this her still talking? Walking alone out of the Delancey Essex Street Station where I got punched in the back of my skull from a random man on the street. How many times did she tell this story? Since then, I've, been, I've seen several New York City women on TikTok reporting they've been punched in the face. Harvard said she initially didn't go to the police because she thought that it was an isolated incident and that officials might brush it off. That doesn't sound like a woman. Women go when they tell. They don't, they don't think, no one's going to listen to me. No, they trust me. We think people are going to listen to us. You know why? Because they always do. Unlike what women claim, you know, no one believes us. Everybody believes us. Since she learned that more women have come forward online to say they've been assaulted, she said she plans to file a police report. Since the attack, Harvard said she is struggling with feeling unsafe in the city she calls home. I will also say it isn't, it isn't out of the realm of possibility to think that some women like saw somebody post they got attention for it, so they decided to post. Especially if they were already, you know, a comedian that wanted to be famous. She is probably telling the truth. I'm just saying. Women, they can lie. Quote, what's really unbearable is that general, is that general never-ending feeling now of feeling unsafe and feeling constantly alert, constantly looking over my shoulder, she said. This anxiety is manifesting physically too. I slept last night for two hours. The night before, I slept for four hours. I'm having trouble breathing and my chest is getting really tight. In their TikTok videos, women have echoed similar sentiments, describing their interactions with their alleged assailants. A woman said she was walking out of the Times Square subway station on Saturday when a man came up to her and punched her in the head. The women, the woman said, that she was able to capture video of the man as he was walking away. Police said a 25-year-old woman was attacked on the 7th Avenue and West 42nd Street. Police publicized in a poster how the suspect was wanted for assault. I mean, that's a really public area. I've been to New York you know, a few times when I lived in the Northeast. You know, you go up, you take somebody from out of town, you see a Broadway show, and it was nice. It was safe. This was, you know, late 90s, early 2000s. It was safe. And I mean, we would, it, it, was, it, was, it was great, but I will never go back. I will never go back. And I said that before this. I said in 2020, in 2020, I said, New York is not coming back. It's done. It will never come back from this. And I'm such a positive person. I'm such an optimist to say New York will never come back. This is all going downhill. It's completely against my nature. I hate it, but I would rather deal in truth. You know, ignorance is not, is not bliss for me. The woman said on TikTok, the traumatic experience will stick with her for the rest of her life. Quote, we are always cautious about walking at night. Now we have to be cautious about walking in broad daylight, she said. Michaela Toronado, a Parsons fashion design student, also shared a TikTok video saying she was punched in the face while leaving class in Manhattan as she was looking down at her phone and texting. Out of nowhere, this man just came up and hit me in the face, she said in the clip, with a bruise visible under one of her eyes. Again, thankfully, they're just kind of getting popped in the face and not actually hit because I mean geez if somebody really punched I mean you could kill me with it I don't want that uh, but again like these women are not noticing the I, how do they not realize like we are vulnerable we always have been because we're women we are weaker physically than men the reason we've been so safe is because of all the good men because the ones that are bad stay in the shadows they stay away from where the good men are going to do something there was a time when a good guy would see a bad guy doing something and step in and stop it but now 
I feel like there's a lot of areas in this nation where the bad guys know nobody's coming to stop them. And in a lot of cases, that includes the police. Do you guys know, ap you know, after, I was thinking about this, after, you know, so many people got uh, fired in 2020 for being police officers or 2021 for, because they didn't want to take the shot and, you know, they weren't, they weren't down with all the DEI, you know, stuff and they retired early, etc. There was a lot of people left the police force and it's a certain type of person. And you know where they find new recruits? Because I thought about this and I thought, the cops that, that um, arrested the homeowner in Queens, right, when the squatters were taking, taking over her, her um, residence, that she, the house that she inherited from her parents, from her mother, and she went there and there were squatters there and the squatters had even changed the locks. Anyway, she went to change the locks too. And the police arrested her. And they were like helping the squatters to like, hey, do you have anything with an address on it? You know? And I thought, these cops are Marxists. They're over there with this idea that it's like the squatters are the ones that need the rights. You know, it's almost like the only reason we have anything is because evil capitalism. And, and I thought, I wonder if they're not going to colleges and recruiting. And so I looked it up. Sure enough, they are. Perfect. Go get these, you know, Marxist college students who have these useless degrees and can't get a job. Make them be police officers and then they can arrest you when you're the homeowner and somebody's squatting in your house and you can get paid to not arrest the criminals and practice anarcho capital or anarcho tyranny where, you know, the bad guys, anything goes. Hey, good guy, you went too over the speed limit, you're getting arrested. So this is just, and again, it's all because when you vote to let more people in the life raft and the life raft can only hold so many, everybody sinks. And women have a harder time not voting with feelings and oh, those poor people. So we end up here. <sighs> All right, where were we? Yes, he hit me right on my cheekbone. This doesn't hurt as bad as the concussion does, she said in an interview aired Thursday on NBC's Today Show. Dealing with the aftermath has also been emotionally taxing. It's all the, it's still all those lines, isn't it? It's almost like the, these women say the same thing when they're in family court about their ex-husbands. It's hard to have sympathy. I, I wish, I hate that it's hard to have sympathy. I feel like an evil person. It's been really, really hard, she said. I think it hits me in waves. A lot of crying because it's been really scary. Yes, that's the smartest thing anybody said so far. It should be scary, you should be scared. Another woman said she was walking Monday when a man punched her in the face, causing a big lump to develop on her head. You guys, I was literally just walking and a man came up and punched me in the face, she said tearfully in a TikTok video. Oh my God, it hurts so bad, I can't even talk. The woman didn't say where exactly she was when she was assaulted. NBC News conducted a geolocation of where she was walking in the Chelsea neighborhood of Manhattan. Police said an incident happened at 10.20 a.m. in the area of West 16th Street and 7th Avenue when an unknown individual hit her in the head. Quote, the victim fell to the ground and suffered injuries to the left side of her face. The victim was treated at a local medical facility, police said in a report shared with NBC News. It wouldn't shock me if these attacks get worse and, and more brutal as people get away with it. There's clearly a lot of anger in these men that are doing these attacks. And it's not 
going away. You know, it's, it's, they don't need to, you know, get counseling. They need to be straightened out. She shared an update on tic, to TikTok. I gotta get attention for it. In which she said she was looking at her phone when a man walking a dog assaulted her. A man walking a dog assaulted her. I wasn't expecting that. There was so much room on the sidewalk and like literally nobody was around. And I guess this man, I don't know if he punched me or if he elbowed me, I literally passed out, she said. So I don't really remember, but I think he just was really mad that my head was down. I wondered that. I wondered if people doing this are so frustrated at women being obsessed with their phones that every time they see it, I actually wondered that before I read this story. This is the first time I'm reading this story with you guys. And it makes me wonder. I, I'm like, men are frustrated. And not all of you guys are good. So what's going to happen when the bad ones get angry? Hmm. Okay. This is a name. Skaboki Stora, 40, of Brooklyn, was arrested Wednesday on an assault charge in connection with the incident, police said. Stora has sought public office in New York since 2021, public records show. He participated in a New York City mayoral debate in 2021. In 2022, he filed a handwritten petition to get on the ballot for New York governor. Last year, records show. Stora ran for the District 9 seat on the New York City Council. That's weird. That's really weird, you guys. Stora and the suspect wanted in the assault outside the Times Square subway station on Saturday do not appear to be the same person. Over a week before the Monday assault, in an area just over a mile south from where that victim was, another woman reported getting punched by a man who apologized before he hit her. I literally just got punched by some man on the sidewalk, the woman said in a TikTok video. He goes, sorry, and then punches me in the head. Weird. This is wild. Police say an incident happened at around 11.48 a.m. March 17th while a woman was walking her dog in the area of Kenmare and Mulberry Streets. No injuries were reported as a result of this incident, police said in a report. In an update posted to her TikTok account, the woman addressed questions she received about what she was doing leading up to the assault. I was looking down at my phone, she said. I was just literally across the street from my building, walking my dog to the dog park. I had seen the man. He was like slightly walking toward me and I didn't think anything of it. And then he says, sorry, and hits me and was immediately gone. Batman. She said a woman who witnessed the assault came over to help her. Neither of the women who posted on TikTok responded to requests for comment. Several others who also posted videos didn't immediately respond to requests for comment. Many women online have since expressed that seeing the videos of other women sharing their alleged experiences have left them feeling uneasy. I have never felt so unsafe in the city than I do now, reality TV personality Melinda Melrose who was on the show Too Hot to Handle, said in a TikTok video, this is another reason why I packed all my things out of my apartment, put them in storage, and I'm moving. I do not, I do not got time to end up on the news and become someone's victim. Okay. And they all don't seem to know. Like, I don't get it. I, maybe, maybe they had more to say. Maybe they were going to talk about what the issue is and what might be going on, but they just seem focused completely on, oh my gosh, this happened to me and I'm a victim. They're so excited to be victims all the time. And I'm like, first of all, you called masculinity toxic before any of this stuff was going on. And you blamed men for all kinds of things that they weren't called it was said we had grape culture and everything and i'm like then why are you going around half naked 
You know, if we really had such a grape culture, why would you be half naked all the time? You wouldn't be. You wouldn't be. And you wouldn't go out alone and you wouldn't go out and drink because you'd be like, oh, this is dangerous. You would behave as if it were some kind of grape culture. But they called it that and they said they're victims and they're constantly abused. And, and you know, you're not. Like, you wouldn't know what it was if it did happen. And yes, there are rare, there are, it does happen, but it's not, you know, it's not every, it's not everybody the way they make it sound like. It's very rare, you know, and it's usually mutual. It's not a big evil guy, poor little delicate flower woman. That's usually, you know, combative, the two. But now that there actually is violence, going on now that there actually is now that women actually are vulnerable they're not even calling it for what it is and they're not even taking it seriously they're using it to get attention on TikTok and I just have to say I don't think that's endearing us to you guys anymore like you're not impressed We got to straighten up. We women have got to straighten up. We don't, we don't just deserve your protection. It's just not the way it goes. And I think a lot of women, well, obviously a lot of women have taken it for granted for a very, very long time. And they're about to really suffer. And we've been talking about this. I released a short today that was a clip from another video because I, I knew I was going to talk about this tonight. And I was like, oh my God. We're already talking about it. Like, it's going to get so much worse just in society. You cannot, you cannot take down good, strong men. You cannot remove them from society and, and from families and therefore destroy the nuclear family and expect to have a high trust, safe, civilized society. You're not going to. And I mean, this, that's the black pill. When will the correction happen? <sighs> Who knows? Probably not in our lifetime. But there, there, there will be some women that realize this is, this is not safe. It's, it's biological in us. We start to feel threatened. That's very, that's, that is a real sort of carnal instinct in us. So you will see a difference when hardship actually comes. The problem is as soon as easier times come back again, she's out there and she's on Instagram, she's on TikTok, and she's looking at all her many options that she doesn't have for real. And, but it's gonna get it's gonna get a little it's gonna get a little tricky out there, and women are going to start to realize that the best thing we can do is cooperate and partner up with you guys and get on your program and be a good helpmeet. That would be the best thing that we could actually do. We'd be safer. That's not going to be, you know, there, there doesn't always have to be supermarkets and like food plentiful, supplies plentiful in the stores. Transportation to get to a store. What if they say no more oil for you? You have to have a, an electric vehicle that costs this amount of money and charging station costs this amount of money. And, what happens then? You're gonna hook up your horse and buggy? Are you gonna walk? What happens? You go to the store and there's nothing. Because, you know, we had to divvy up everything and make it equal. And of course, that's code for the state takes over and everybody starves. Like, women have no concept of what that looks like, what it looks like when people are actually hungry and there aren't any food stamps. 
I have no idea. You're not going to be Jennifer Garner from Alias and start kicking butt. You're not going to do that. You know? And then never mind the ones that have young children and are pregnant. We really are meant to be complimentary with men. And do the men need us? No, they don't. In fact, we are one more mouth to feed, one more person to protect. So, you know, we really should, we should try to be bringing something to the table. We should try to enhance his life in whatever way we can. Because it's good for us too. Not just because what we get out of it, but the mutual, you know, the, mut the actual partnership, complementing one another. And there's a reason why there's a male and a female species and are industrialized and, you know, all these, you know, supermarkets and roads and all these things kind of mask how much we especially need you guys. And this is the beginning. I don't know how fast it's gonna go. I don't know how quickly it's gonna descend into utter madness. And I don't know if there'll be a reprieve for a while, but <sighs> women are really, really, <laughs> they've really shot themselves in the foot with this. You really need to eat some humble pie and say, oh, we've been real bad and we've been ungrateful and uh, we're very sorry and we want to get along now. That would be awesome. You guys would be like, nope. <laughs> be like, I don't trust any of you. I get it. Rightly so. Rightly so. You shouldn't. But man, we should have done that, you know, 20 years ago. We should have been saying this. And now it's too late. You guys are like... We've ruined it. We've ruined it. We've ruined you guys. So that's what's going on in the news. <laughs> who knows? I mean, who knows what I'll what I'll learn tonight when I catch up on everything. But this is this has been this has been interesting and I think it's very telling. So uh yeah, get out of the cities. And um yeah, keep an eye out of what's really going on out there because it's no joke and it's happening pretty fast. So thanks for hanging out and uh, going over all this with me. It's less scary when I share it with you guys. And uh, it's, it is, it's, it is less scary when I share it with you guys. So um, take care of yourselves. Do something that feeds your soul. I love you guys and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Have a good night.